Hi, welcome to the 144 Java Tutorials. Today I'm going to be dis demonstrating how you can analyze a line of text using a while loop. And um, this simple application is basically going to do what you see on the screen. It's going to ask the user to enter a line of text, and then it's going to display the number of letters, digits, spaces, um, other characters, and words in the, in the uh, string. And it's also going to display how many long words there were in the string. Not how many, but whether there were any or not. And a long word is a word that's uh, at least 10 characters in length. So um, to do this, we'll make two passes over our string. The first pass will be to look at individual characters. So we'll um, loop over um, our input string starting at the uh, get my pen here. Starting at uh, the character in position 0, and then we'll do char, char at 1, 2, 3, and so forth, all the way down to the last character in the string. So basically we're going to loop from position 0 to input dot length minus 1. Um, so we're going to loop over our string, we'll look at each individual character, and we'll test to see whether it's a letter or a, um, a um, digit or a space and so forth. So let's get started on that part, and I have set up a little skeleton program that just um, declare, has the scanner imported and has the class header and the method header and uh, instantiates the scanner and um, asks the user for the uh, line of text. So now we want to write this loop to loop over the string and count the number of characters in the different classes. Um, so I'm going to need uh, several counters here. I'm going to need one to keep up with the position that I'm on in the string. So again, I'll start at position 0 and go to length minus 1. So I'm going to initialize that counter um, or loop control variable to zero. I am also going to need to count the number of letters. So I'm going to have a variable called letter count that I'll set to zero. And I'm going to have a, a digit counter that I'll set to zero as well. And also a space counter. And and I'll have an other count that's equal to zero that I'm going to count other characters with. So now what I want to do is I want to loop over my string. So I'm going to use a while loop and I'm going to say while position, which is position is um, keeping up with which character in the string I'm looking at, while position is less than input dot length. And notice I'm using less than there, which is going to cause us to loop to length minus 1. And in that loop, I'm, I'm going to want to look at input.charat position um, and compare it to see if it's a letter, a digit, and so forth. So to make that a little bit uh, simpler, a little bit shorter, I'm going to save the value of that character in a, in a char variable. So I can just look at that rather than using that longer expression, char at position, and so forth. So um, I'll set that to input char at position. So I have a copy of that character. And then I will look to see if it's a letter. Now to determine if it's a, a letter, I could use um, the um, if, um, if ch is less than or equal to a lowercase a or and ch is greater than or equal to a lowercase z or if it's an uppercase character, if ch is less than or equal to an uppercase a and ch is greater than or equal to an uppercase z. Now, I could do it this way, and that's a little bit tedious. Um, luckily, there is a uh, what's called a wrapper class in Java that makes this a little bit simpler. Um, and it's called the character class. And what we do is we use, it's got a Boolean method called isLetter. 
and we pass it the char variable that we're looking at. So instead of having that longer uh, Boolean expression with the relational operators and so forth, this accomplishes the same thing. I can say if character dot is letter ch, um, and that will return tr a Boolean value true if letter is a character and false if it's not. So if it is a letter, letter count plus plus. Um, also, rather handily, there is also a character dot is digit. And there are, so, there are a number of these, and you can look in the uh, Java docs at the character class to uh, see the different um, operators that you can perform on char variables using this character, what's called a wrapper class. So now I can say digit count plus plus. Remember, this is equivalent to saying digit count e equals digit count plus one. We're just using the increment operator there. Um, else if there's an is white space that returns true for not only for spaces but for things like tab characters and that sort of thing. So in that case, space count plus plus. And so if it's not a letter or a digit or a space, then I'm going to assume that it's some other character, probably a punctuation mark or a special symbol. So in that case, I'll just use an else statement there, and I'll say else other count plus plus. Um, and then also in this loop, I need to, um, once I've looked at that particular character in the string, I need to increment my position counter so that I, the next time, I'm going to be looking at the next character in the string. Um, if I forget to do that, I'm going to end up with an infinite loop, so I have to be careful about that. So now, let's go ahead and print out these values, and we'll test our program um, for this particular loop, and then we'll go look at what we want to do when we um, look at particular words in our string. So here we're going to print and I'm going to stick a backslash in and here to put a blank line your text contains I spell it correctly your text contains and I'm going to put a new line here uh, contains letter count letters and I'll put each of these counters on its own line by sticking the backslash ends in there digit count digits new line and um, space count spaces character plus other count other characters okay and um, this is all the output we need for now so now I'm going to save this I called it textanalyzer.java, so I'm going to compile it. Java C textanalyzer.java. And it compiled correctly, so now I'm going to run it. And I'll use that text example that I had on the on the slide, and I believe that was um, Testing one, two, three, dash, dash, text analyzer application. Period. Okay. And if we look at our output here, it says we your text contains 30 letters, three digits, five spaces, and three other characters. And we can look at our text and, and see that that is in fact um, correct. And so now what I need to do is I need to go through and count the number of words and I need to determine whether this string in fact contains a long word or not. So 
Um, in order to look at, look for words, what I need to do, go back to my, here. Um, in order to look at um, individual words, um, I need to be able to determine where a word begins or ends. So I need to be able to basically pick out these individual strings here that are separated by spaces and special characters. Um, luckily we have a handy um, class that we can use in Java called the String Tokenizer. And basically its job is to, it gives us a mechanism for going through and picking out what are called tokens, in this case words, um, in this particular example, but picking out the different tokens in our string um, and it, it gives us some methods for doing that. So the way that works is, let me go back to edit here. Um, in order to use the string to tokenizer, it happens to be in the java.util um, package as well. Now I could say import java.util.string tokenizer, but if I want to, I can use what's called a wildcard character. I could put um, the star in there, and what that does is it allows me to use any of the classes in that package. So I'm just going to do that as a shorthand, so that'll allow me to use the string tokenizer. And um, the uh, code for using this is on your uh, lab handout. And the way this works is you say string, we're going to instantiate a string tokenizer, and I'm going to call it tokenizer. So this is a lot like instantiating a scanner, for example. It's a new string tokenizer. And I'm going to pass it my input string that I read in because that's what I want to tokenize. That is what that's what I want to break into pieces. I want to extract each of the words from that from that string. So I pass the string tokenizer the input string that I want to want to examine. So I do that. I want to count in that string the number of tokens. And so to do that, I'm going to take each token and store it in a string so that I, I can can uh, count it. And then also I want to be able to look at it to see if it is um, 10 characters long or not. Uh, let's see. I'm going to count the number of words in my string. And so let's worry first about counting the number of words and then we'll come back and, and do the piece where we determine whether there is in fact a long word in the string or not. So to do this, we're going to say while tokenizer dot has more tokens. And basically what that means is um, while we haven't um, we're, we're going to go through and get each token from the string, each word, and this will tell us when we've reached the end, essentially. Now, I'm going to, to get a token from the string, or from our string tokenizer, we say tokenizer dot next token. And that'll get the next word from our from our string. And for now what I'd like to do is just print that token out so I can see what I'm getting here. And then I'm also going to increment my word count so I can count that that word. Okay. And oh I really would like to do this. I'm going to move this. Sorry. Mistake. Put this up above my print statement. And I'm going to add to my output, along with the spaces and digits and so forth, I'm also going to add the number of words. Okay. So it'll print the let number of letters, digits, spaces, other characters, and words in the string. Now let's save and test this and see if it works the way we expect. So I'm going to compile this and I'm going to run it again. Okay. 
and I'm going to enter my line of text that I had before. Uh, analyzer application period. Now, if I look at my, I'm going to go up here a little bit, and I'm going to look at my output from my um, tokenizer loop. Now if I look at this, I typed in testing123 and so forth, it prints testing as my first token, 123 is my second, but it's printing um, the two dashes as a token, and it's also, if I look at the word application that was on the end of the string there, it's including the period. And the reason for this is that the default with the string tokenizer is to break the tokens apart um, using what's a, a space as a delimiter. That is, it, it, every time it sees a space, it, it uses that to separate the tokens. And what we'd really like here is we'd like to um, also break tokens up using special characters like commas, um, punctuation marks, and things like that. We would like those to be delimiters as well and not, we don't want to count those as words. For example, our dash dash there should not be a word in our string. So to do that, when you instantiate your tokenizer, what you can do is you can pass it an additional argument that tells it the um, delimiters that you want to use. So, and you just put those in double quotes, you just list the delimiters that you want to use. And so in this case, of course, we want to use a space, we want to use a tab character, we want to use a new line character. Now it uses all of those um, anyway, but we also want to use things like commas and dashes and colons and semicolons and periods and question marks and exclamation points. Um, we might even, if we want to include a double quote, we can put a backslash in front of it to mean that we really do want to use a double quote as a delimiter, otherwise it's going to interpret that as the end of our delimiter string, and so forth. And we could continue to list different delimiters there, but this is probably good enough for this example. Um, so let's save this and compile and run it, and I'll show you the difference here. So now, we compile it. And we run it. And I'm going to cheat here and use my up arrow to get my input line. And now it says I have five words, which is correct. And if I look up here, it's broken those. Notice it's not uh, counting our dashes anymore. It's, um, it's not including the period as part of our token. It's just doing the words. It's also counting this one, two, three. Um, as, as a word, but for this example, that's okay. There would be a way to, to keep it from doing that, but we're not going to worry about that right now. So basically, that's how we go about counting the words. Now, the other thing we would like to do is we would like to know whether this um, string has any, uh, whether this input string has any long words in it, and long words are going to be words that have 10 or more characters. And in order to do that, what I'm going to do is use a Boolean flag. I just want to know, does it have any long words or not? I'm not counting how many, I just want to know, true or false, are there any in there? And so the way I would do that is I'm going to add, um, before the loop, I'm going to add a Boolean flag, long word, and I'm going to initialize it to false. And then what I'll do is I, as I loop through the, over the input, I will look at each token, each, each word, and see if it's 10 or more characters long. And if it is, then I'll flip that flag, I'll set it to true. Um, and I'm also going to define a constant here. Normally we would do this up at the top, but I'm going to do it right here. Um, long length equals 10. So a long word will be 10 characters or more. So here in my loop, as I get each token, and I probably don't need to print these anymore. I was just doing that basically for debugging so I could see what was going on. So here I'm going to say, if the token, this, that's the, the word, if the token dot length is greater than or equal to my constant long length, then I know that I have a long word in my string. And so to keep track of that, I'm just going to set my Boolean flag, long word, to true. So as I loop over all the words in the string, if I find one that's 10 characters long, that flag will get flipped to true. 
And so I will use that after I print out all of my counters. I'm also going to say if long word. I could say if long word equal equal true, but because this is a Boolean flag, which is going to be true or false, it's perfectly fine to just say if long word. Then I'm going to print system got out dot print line and one or more long long words. So this will print all my counters and then it'll say and one or more long words if there was a, a word of ten characters or more. Otherwise, and here I'll say and no long words. Okay, so let's save this. So we've got this Boolean flag, and as we loop over all the, the tokens, all of the words in the string, if we find one that's 10 characters or more, that gets set to true. Otherwise, it remains false. So I'll use my input that I had before. And analyzer is, in fact, or application, rather, is longer than 10 characters. I think it's 11. So here... Notice in the output it says, and one or more long words. If I were to run this again, and to say something like um, 640K ought to be enough for anybody. This is a quote from Bill Gates in 1981. And notice it says that that contains no long words. So um, I think that's it. That gives you an idea of how you can loop over a string and look at individual characters in the string and also use the tokenizer to extract individual um, pieces of the, or tokens from the string, um, in this case words, and also how you can use a Boolean flag to um, determine whether some condition exists inside your loop and then outside the loop use that to, to um, print a particular message to the user. So um, I think that's all for now. Thanks. See you next time.